So, Father, we thank you for Nathan and Lisa. Thank you that you, you have great adventures for us. And uh, thank you for this great adventure that Nathan and Lisa are on at the moment. Just that longing to put it all out there. Uh, to go where you're calling them to go. To pioneer. And thank you for just that love for you, Lord Jesus. Love for the scriptures that Nathan has. And Father, we come this morning just wanting to hear what you would have to speak and whisper into each of our hearts as we come longing to, to be followers of Jesus, to be apprentice to him. And so, Lord, this morning, would you show us a little bit of your way for us through what Nathan shares. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go for it. Amen. Hey, thanks for having me. It's, it's so good to see you. Um, even with masks on, I, I imagine you look even better with masks off, but l l let's just keep them on for now. Hey, I need you to turn with me. Do you have a Bible or a device? Hey, wait, who's got devices? You've got devices? I'm not saying don't get your real Bibles out, but I, I'm going to talk about devices in a minute. So, so firstly, if you've got a phone, have that out. And secondly, if you've got a Bible, have that out. And if your Bible's on your phone, then I guess that's all the better. But what I'll ask you to do, and is it okay? I'm going to stand and speak. I love such a wonderful collaborative community vibe, but I find it hard to communicate the Word of God and not be on my feet. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, what I need you to do is uh, turn with me to um, Luke chapter 5, 15 and 16. And then if you um, really want to be super quick, keep a finger in the Bible part or get ready because I'm going to also go to John 4, 31 to 34. Luke 5, 15 to 16. Someone tell me when you're there. First one there wins. Oh, we've got a winner. So here we go. This is 5, 15 to 16. It just goes like this. But the news about him, that's Jesus, the news about Jesus was spreading even farther and large crowds were gathering to hear him and, they, and, and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus himself would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. So I want you to hold on to that. There's something in that for us. And then those who are super quick, lightning draw, we're going to jump to John 4, 31 to 34. Who's there? Oh, man, super, super fast. Okay. It says, meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, look, I found food to eat that you don't know anything about. So the disciples were saying to one another, he's brought something else to eat, didn't he? And Jesus said, the food, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. They're the two things. If you're going to hold something in one pocket, put the first scripture, something second, put the other scripture because that's what we're going to chew over today. And I'm just actually noticing I might swap my device. You've got your devices. My device, my batteries are running a little bit low, so I'm going to get my... I'll get my other device. That's running a little bit low. I'll need a charger for that. Anyone got a spare charger? No? I'll use my other device for the moment. I'll see if I can get hold of something. Okay. Isn't it funny, though? Isn't it funny, the charger? Um, 20 years ago, nobody thought about the angst that you get when you're starting to run low on your phone. Is that right? Do you know what I mean? Like, we used to not even worry about it, and now, like, it's a first world problem, isn't it? But now, when you start getting to, like, 40%, and it's only mid-morning in the day, like now, you start thinking, okay, conserve, conserve, Nathan. You've got a, you've got a day to go through, and you're not going to survive if you don't have it. Uh, uh, yeah? And then you get to 20%, and it goes red, the, and it tells you, the phone goes, uh-uh, 20%, now you're in trouble, and you start going, okay, all right. Like, I don't want anyone to freak out, but we might have an emergency. 
It's getting, and then 10%, now, you can, you know, you're, now you're, you're monitoring everything. Like you can't, you're not opening video messages anymore because that drains too much and you know that. You're being very, very careful. I'm okay. I've got my, but thank you. Um, yeah, and, and, and then the retin and the 2%, then the 1%. Especially when you're waiting for an important text, you're starting to be really, really tense. But the thing is, I think I think the thing about this, right, is we talk about it. We know it's a first world problem. It's with the phone. It's with the charger. But life kind of feels like that for many of us at the moment, doesn't it? Like I'm not talking about your phone now. I'm not talking about my devices right now. I'm talking about like life right now, post in a COVID, post COVID, or mid COVID, or whatever we are kind of world. If you're anything like me, there's areas of my life that I'm feeling quite drained. Like imagine, imagine if you had, imagine if you had not just the bar on your device, imagine if you had a bar on your inner world that showed on your chest right now, or showed on your watch right now, or showed somewhere right now. And I want to ask you this, in that inner part of you, if you could see how many percent you had left in your inner reserves, how much would it say after everything we've been through? I'd suggest that not many of us, if we're being honest, and I feel like we are an honest community here, if we're being honest, not many of us would be able to say, oh yeah, nah, nah, I'm in green, I'm in 90%, man, I'm feeling awesome. Many of us would be saying, it's a little bit less than that. When I say that inner self, I'm, I'm, I know that we're holistic in nature. We're, we're body, we're soul, we're emotion, we're spirit. So I guess when I'm talking about this inner charge of you and I, I'm, I'm talking about, and maybe it's different for you, maybe it's your emotional strength today after everything we're going through and everything maybe you're going through or your mental fortitude under the consistent pressure of lockdown and, and outside of lockdown and trying to get things started or your spiritual help expressed in hope and faith and love. So maybe I, when I'm saying one gauge, maybe there's several gauges, but I'm talking about your inner person. It might not be the same, but you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Inner person. And I don't want to really do a raise of hands, but maybe... You know, I'm not expecting much, but maybe if I was to say, let's go, let's gauge and, and, and online, let's, let's, let's put something in the comments, but, but maybe you don't have to do that, but maybe just reflect for a second. If I was to look at my percentage, would it be 80%? Oh, probably it'd be more like maybe 60% in this area, but man, I'm going through a lot of stress right now. Maybe it's 40% in this other area. Maybe it's 20% and it's red now. For many of us here, I guarantee you, your neighbours around you right now, there's people in this very place who are saying, Nathan, I'm at 2%. I'm at 1%. I'm at my very limit. If another thing hits me, I don't know where I'll be. I don't know what I'll do. And now can I be super honest with you? I feel like we, I've got areas of my life where I feel like I'm at 2%. Maybe you're more, but I'm not. I've got areas of my life. And this is the thing, leaders and, and, and church leaders and pastors, sometimes we're not, we're not meant to talk like that, are we? We're often meant to be like, oh man, it's all going great. But I've got areas that I'm, I'm really stretched in right now. And I'm sharing because I know you are too. I guess I want to say this. The first thing I want to say is it's okay, it's good to be honest in the house of God, before God and before one another. And it has been such a hard time for us all. And it's okay to admit that, it's okay to be that. It's okay not to be okay, because God is with us, he's with you. And that's okay. I am actually, I am actually thinking Still about that phone, I'm so sorry. It, it is really quite running low. But luckily, <laughs> as contrived as this next sentence is, I've, I actually did bring a charger. It was here the whole time. I, I had a charger that you guys didn't know in reserve to be charged at all times. I, I had a charger that no one else knew about. And I guess that's what I remember Jesus just said in the scripture. 
The time I want to talk and the time that I have together, which isn't actually a long time, I guess I'd want to talk about these two things. And I hope as we open up the microphone and we have our, our Zoom community joining as well, I hope we can continue a conversation maybe about these two things from what you do when you're feeling really low in some areas of your life. Because the Bible tells us when we look at the life of Jesus that he had some places that he went to to charge that you and I can access and should be accessed, are indeed invited to access as well. There's a place and a source for us. And if you are the type of person who takes notes in your message, when I'm listening to someone uh, communicate, I like to take notes, it helps me. And if you're like that and you needed a title, because similarly when I'm listening, I like to take a title, then I write, this is something like, I don't know, the source. Jesus had a source to go to. Jesus, teach us where we can go when we're feeling in this way. A source in life that we see that Jesus had that he invites us to, to get quietly restored when we need it. And I guess I'd want to say this, in my own journey, as a, as a nurse, as a, as a church planter, as a father, as a husband, as a educationalist as an employee, as a student, I know that I've needed times where I can recharge and I guess I have an opportunity to share a little bit of my own story. In fact, I, I recall a season just a few years ago in a workplace situation where I recall I was under immense pressure and I didn't want to use the COVID moment because we're all still living through it, but if just before, a couple of years before COVID, immense pressure. I just recently moved to the city and I'd recently got this incredible job and I love it. And, but there was, there was a space and a season that I was walking through where I had just this immense amount of pressure in a workplace. Anyone ever been in a workplace situation? Is everybody going to nod? Of course, where it's been immense pressure. There's been pressure above, there was pressure below, there was pressure from every side, there was pressure to perform, there was pressure to, and, and it was such a sort of a tricky work time that I had over the six or nine month period, about three or four different colleagues and people external to the situation pull me aside and they'd say, Nathan, why don't you just quit? If I was in your position, I would have quit months ago. I would have quit ages ago. How are you still turning up and why such a good attitude all the time? I'm like, it's not just, it's not the Australian optimism. It's like, you know, that wears off very quickly when you're worn down. It was, it was heavy. And when I reflected upon it, I could only think it was this thing that I had a source, I had a charger that no one else knew about in Christ. I, knew, I had a place to go when I was running low. And when I came out of that place, I had, I had, I had a fresh set of energy, I had a fresh lease, I had a fresh perspective. But more importantly, that's my story. More importantly, we see that Jesus did too. And let's follow Jesus. So can we bring the scripture, just bring it back up uh, again in your mind, in your hand. I told you to keep it in your pocket figuratively, metaphorically. So bring that out again. Luke 5, 15 to 16. News was spreading about Jesus everywhere and large crowds were gathering around to hear him, to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus himself would often slip away in the wilderness to pray. And right there, you could underline it, you can highlight it, but keep that in your mind. Our Messiah, our rabbi, our teacher, our example would regularly get himself away to go and pray. We never even hear what he does up there. but he come back ready to go. And in the other scripture, of course, when he reveals that the disciples are saying, eat something, and he says in John 4, 31, he says, I have food that you don't even know about. My food is to do the will of him who sent me to accomplish his work. There's two things that I've seen Jesus do time and time again in scripture, and, and the, he tells us it recharges his spirit in some way, recharges his soul in some way. He gets away to be with God, his father, and he comes back and he does the will of the Father in his daily life. And both of those things give him a sense of fulfillment and energy. I'm interested, and I challenge you to do this actually, look at the times in the Gospels where Jesus gets away. They don't talk much about it because, of course, he goes away by himself most of the time and he doesn't seem to feel the need to tell his disciples what he was doing. They're like, I'm trying to write your Gospel. We're trying to write the letter. The people in CCE in 2021 will probably want to know 
what you did up there and get some tips. But Jesus said, no, it's just me and God. It's me and my father. But we do know that when he went away, he often came back ready with something. For example, he went away and then he came back and he said, all right, guys, gather around. I'm going to pick my disciples, pick my apostles. He went up there, he, he charged up and he came back ready to go. He went up another time and he came back and says, guys, it's time to go. It's time to go into the regions and start to preach the kingdom of, 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 and spread the good news. And I've discovered today in my, our, my own life, and I want to suggest that maybe for you as well, that this art of getting away, this, this source that you can recharge in is an invitation that your father has for you as well. Lisa is fantastic at reading me. <laughs> and I try and keep it, you know, I'm all right, I'm all right. How are you? Good. I go from good day to okay, not a big bandwidth. But Lisa can see, and she can often see when the weight of the world is getting on my shoulders, I'm getting overwhelmed with life, and I'm at 5%, 2%, 1%, and I'm, I don't know how I'm going to do the next thing. And Lisa will often say to me, she'll say, Nathan, you look miserable. Go up Blackford Hill, get, get, it, get it, leave, and just go and be with God. She says it much kinder, perhaps, or maybe not that much kinder. And so I'll go up the hill, and this is what I do. Can I share with you? I'll just share with you. You'll have your own thing. This is what I do. It's almost like a picnic. It's like a picnic. It's like a picnic. I, I, I find a space. I go for a walk in nature. There's something about, I love Louise, that you say music is something for you. Getting out into nature is something for me. And, and I just see myself, like, I go out there and metaphorically in my head, I, I, I get to a point where I'm finally by myself somewhere. And I'll start pouring out to God. I'll start going, God, oh. Oh, and it's like putting a picnic blanket down, metaphor. Oh, and then in my, I don't know, what is it? The rug sack of my soul, I start pulling out um, this dish. And I go, this is my work, God. This is, you should see how messy that is. I don't even know what I'm going to do about that next decision. And he's like, he doesn't say anything. He just goes, mm hmm, that's, you know. And I go, there's more. This is, this is my marriage, God, not with, Le like, with Lisa, of course, but like with, uh, it's not, it's me. But I'm like, I'm like, Oh, this is what's going on in my relationship. And, and then I come back and I, this is my, um, my, my children. I'm so worried about them. And, and, and pretty soon this picnic blanket is full of all of the things of my life. And all that time I'm pouring out, it's like God hasn't, he hasn't said anything. And I'm getting frustrated because I'm just getting it all out. And finally, and, and I'm serious, all the time he sort of keeps nudging me. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? And I'm like, Father, all these things. When I'm all done, he'll say, he'll often, he'll, he'll go, okay, are you done? When I'm, I'm done, and I'm just in that prayer, and then I'm emptied out, then his whisper starts to come, and he starts to say something like, that thing with your work, that thing with your career, you're getting a bit too hung up about this thing. You need to forgive that person. Just show a bit of grace to that, and you'll see what I'm going to do. And I go, oh, yeah, that, no, oh, Yeah. You know that issue going on in your marriage right now? Just apologize because it was your bad anyway, Nathan. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's true. That's for you, Lisa. Yeah. And but part by part, not only have I poured out before the Lord held nothing back from him, but part by part, he starts to give me wisdom. He starts to fill me with something again. And then, and then as I put them back in my rucksack at the end of my time with the Lord, in my time away, I realize that I'm coming down with something that I didn't go up with. I've, I've put down some burden somewhere. I've, I've unpacked before him and I'm coming back with, I don't know, a bounce, a step, a, a, an energy. I've, I've been, I didn't even realize it, but I've been charging that whole time. I come back through the door and Elisa can tell immediately there's a, I think it's the same smile, the same affect, the same manner, but she goes, no, he's been with God. I'm running out a bit of time here. So I need to hand back in just a moment. But it's like this. Isaiah 40, 31 says, those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run and not get tired. They'll walk and not become weary. For all of us who are at our 10%, 2%, 1%, feeling weary of soul, feeling weary of mind, 
a wonderful thing that we can be doing is waiting upon the Lord because then he'll renew, then he'll charge. Don't let your device get die. Don't let your device go to zero. When you're invited, you and I have been invited to be in his presence, to, to do such a thing. So here's my questions for you. As we start to communicate and have a dialogue together about this, it's how do you do it? How, that's just what I don't, how do you connect in with God in this way? How do you recharge in the Lord? Or even a practical one. Here's a, here's a nice little foundational ground one. How can you get yourself away and be with the Lord this week? Would you mind get creative and think about it? I'm so glad the youth are back. When you, the band guys, you guys were awesome. And while you guys were leading us in worship, it's, I hope this is okay, but while you guys were leading us in worship, I just had a sense from God, you know, when, when you get to come and be a guest in someone else's house, someone else's church, you see things with maybe fresh perspective, but I'm, I'm probably, I'm speaking to the converted, everybody here loves you guys, but I was seeing you guys lead us in worship and I meant, man, there's such significance to these guys. The, you're in the right place, in the right house, in the right church, in the right time of your life. And I feel like maybe sometimes you might, like all of us, feel like, how significant could I possibly be? But I feel like God wants to say to some of you, all of you, that, man, what he said to me was fan into flame the gift of God that is on their life. You guys just keep doing what you're doing, and you've got to understand that when you pray, um, it's powerful and effective. Like, and I don't, man, I feel like that's so token, but I don't mean it to be. What I really mean is, um, like, the singer who is here, man, when you pray, your prayers are powerful and effective. Yeah, you. Yeah, when you, yeah, you, cam, camo pants, you, you, when you pray, your prayers are powerful and effective. And if you don't have a, uh, uh, if, you, if you don't feel comfortable praying out loud with groups, or maybe you do, that doesn't matter. But the world needs you praying right now because your prayers are powerful and effective. For real, there is significance in your life. You, you're needed here. And guitarist as well, you, you know, guitarist powerful and effective. Make sure you are taking, understanding how significant this part of your life is and, who, and how significant you are in all of our lives and into this, in this community. I'm so glad you're back. Okay, I really need to finish, but I didn't even touch the second thing of what we saw Jesus do, so can I just throw an observation? Here's my observation. The second thing we see Jesus do, right, to get charged up is the bread that he, that he says, I have bread that you don't know about, and my bread is doing the will of the Father. And here's my observation. Isn't it interesting when we're feeling low, when we're feeling flat, isn't it interesting how impactful it is, not only for the person that we bless, but for ourselves, when we see someone in need, when we see someone who needs support, and we go out of our way, even out of our own convenience, to step into someone's life and help them, what it does for our own soul and what it does for our own spirit. And I wonder if that's not just an encouragement for someone here. That even when, even if you're feeling really bad, even if you're 2%, even if you are, often the first thing we do is we start self-preserving. We don't want to send any more energy out unless our phone breaks. <laughs> but maybe there's an encouragement somewhere to, this week, if you're out in your community, if you're walking through the streets and there's somebody in need and everything in you says, I'm so down right now, I don't think I have anything to give, can I challenge you to give something anyway? Love someone anyway? Reach out to someone anyway? It was something that built up Jesus. When he was doing the will of the Father in heaven, it was a food that no one else knew about. And maybe it has always been the same for us. Anyway, I don't have time to unpack that. I need to hand back and we want to have a proper conversation. But bless you and thank you so much for having me. And I look forward to talking some more.